I'm back in my man cave. And I know for you guys, everyone out there, the thing I get asked a lot is, you know, Des, what do you do on a week to week basis with your prep, with elastics and everything like that? And that's what this these little videos are all about. I think they're really interesting for you guys. You know, a few little shortcuts that I do when I'm doing elastics. One thing I'm going to be doing today, or the first thing I'll be doing today, because I haven't done no kit for at least two or three weeks, which is really unusual for me, because normally I'm like week to week basis, but it's been cold. We're in the winter months. It's not great being out, you know, freezing, you know, freezing cold. But it has come. I've been to Tunnel Bar and I've been doing some other matches here and there. And I need to check my elastics. Now, one elastic I've been using is Nine Jura. Um, it's a good old rounder. You know, whether you're catching on Carpod F1, it's something I've been using at Tunnel Bar and I've been using it on my local venues. So the first thing I do is check my elastics. I've actually got my kit safe there with every single basically top kit that I own. So that's from like nine Jura right up to 17 Jura. Um, I've not got me real light elastics, they're still in me hold all because I'm not really using them at the second. So let's go through it. This is what I do. So I've got me nine Jura's here. I know this has been getting a bit of a battering lately. So what I'm going to do is put that top kit together. And I know 90% of the time, or 99% of the time, the pull bung end, or the rotor puller bung end, if you like, is really normally brilliant. It's not, you know, it's not going to get the wear and tear. It's this end, it's the Dacron end that gets the hammer in. And this is where you've got to be checking, you know, in the summer, even after a match, if I've been catching lots and lots of carp, and one rig is at a hammering or two rigs have had a hammering, I'll actually check them after the match. So I make sure because of what I don't want to do is go maybe to the next day, and I get that topic out again, use it in the elastic snacker because I've caught like a massive weight of carp on it. But this is what I do. So what I'm going to do is get me elastic out like that, pull the Dacron off, or pull the Dacron bead back, and just look at it and inspect it. And to be perfectly honest, and sometimes I just want to change the knot because if it's nice and smooth, which that one is, I just want to make sure that the knot's bang on. So just taking that little bit of elastic off is not going to hurt. But in my mind, when I go fishing again, I know I've used these for a few weeks. So let's cut that off. Get that bit of elastic out of that. And then do your little knot again. So you're literally taking probably like two inches of elastic. But if that was rough, if you start rubbing your fingers over like that, you think, hmm, actually, it's all right when it's a little bit. But when you start looking at it, it's quite pitted, especially on lighter elastics like that. And you're going to have to change it. And I know one of my elastics is gone, which I'm going to show you now. But I want to show you both, you know, the things that I do. You know, sometimes you don't want to change your elastic. In here, you just want to make sure, because what you've got to remember, whatever elastic you use, whether you use hollows, solids, when you tie a knot in it, over time, it actually, it actually, you know, it sort of decays the elastic, because it's so tight and it's binding like that. You just imagine something like that for weeks and weeks and months on end. Sometimes you just got to bite the bullet and just redo the knot, and I do that, and this is what I'm going to do now. So let's do another little knot. So you know my little knots that I use. I've showed you that before. So it's round once and then a half and then back through the bottom. I'm going to try and do this as small as I can because obviously I don't want to adjust the elastic tightness too much. Like that. So just pull that down, check it. And I can tell by just doing that knot that it was smooth the knot's gone tight. If I was to do that and it starts to sort of grip a bit where it's sort of, you know, getting a bit, well, it just gets rough, then I'd probably change it. But that, for me, is perfect. And that's the nice thing about a man cave is you can take your tag end off and it goes on the floor and you leave it. Obviously, if that was in your house, you'd have to pick it up or you'd have the missus after you. So that's a small Dacron on there, one of the red ones, the new ones. And then all I do then... Just give it a little bit of a lube, a couple down, get that in, let's get that round, 
like that. Look at that. Beautiful. That's absolutely bang on. So that's bang on for F1s, skimmers, odd roach. If you're going somewhere on a mixed fishery, which I have, you know, tench, you don't know what you're going to hook next. That elastic is absolutely mustard for that. So that one's done. And obviously I would go through all my number nines first. Now I know my ghost top, which is that one, needs changing because it's out of hammering. I caught a load of fish on it yesterday and I was a bit worried about it. And you can see that it's actually lost its colour where it's been, it's been in there for absolutely months. So let's look at that. Yeah, you can tell that, you know, I've probably caught, I've had this for weeks and I actually caught a big weight of carp on this yesterday. Probably, I caught over a hundred pound and obviously I've caught some big carp. I was only fishing sort of 0, 0, 011 power line, but that fair play to it is, you know, it's done its job. It's been in there for weeks. I've not just caught 100 pounds of carp. I've been using it for weeks. So I need to change that now. So the first thing I do, I've got a brand new spool of nine Jora. Let's get that out. Obviously this all comes with the lube already on it. Make sure you've got a nice clean floor, which I have. If not, put it in a bucket or something like that so you don't get it all dusty and horrible. Now, what I do then is actually break the old elastic. And this is simple as tying just a single little knot like that. Tie that on. Make sure that new elastic's tight. So you've got the smallest knot possible. Cut them tag ends off if you like. I normally just drag the whole lot through. I'm a bit lazy. But this is the easiest way of doing it. So leak that, that stays like, that goes in, that's basically the old and the new mixed um, together. Now, I want to put the Dacron on. Before I push that through the pole, get your Dacron on. So, let's just cut that bit of the old knot off. It takes seconds. Like that. Open the Dacron up. Again, 9 Jura, small Dacron. It's one of the new Dacrons which I've got in here. Obviously you can check that, but well, that's what I use from nine to sort of 13. It doesn't need changing. I've had these on there for absolutely months and months, all through the summer and they're like, like they're literally like brand new. So let's put them on. Obviously I've got plenty of um, extra on there, so I'm not worried about, I've got, you know, just do the knot nice and big. Like that. Make sure everything's tight. Just run your fingers through it. There's no burrs on it or anything like that. I've actually got some glasses now. This is what's happening midlife. Unfortunately for me, I will show you guys. The result's going to be laughing. But I, I do actually use glasses now for close-up stuff. So, so I didn't think these days would come. But there you go. I can see that now. I mean, the eyesight's still pretty good, but yeah, for close-up work, unfortunately, I do need a pair of glasses, but I thought I'd um, put that on for you. I try not to put them on, because it makes me feel pretty old, to be honest. But there you go. Anyway, so that's him on. Same knot, round once, half, back through the bottom, which obviously you sh we know we've showed you before, but this is the easiest and quickest way of doing your elastics. And you can do this in your house, you can do it in your garage, in your shed. So what I do then, that's obviously all connected up, ready to go. I've got my bead on the end there. You can probably see on there, I've probably adjusted that whilst I've been fishing. It's probably had a few big carp. It's sort of stretched a bit and then it's hanging out a bit. And I literally just do a quick loop on the end. When I'm bagging, I'm not, I'm catching, I'm not, you know what I mean? I just do a little loop on there. But then I just pull this through then. Like that. Let that go. Pull them all the way through. That comes out of the rotor puller. And then I get to a stage where that is now, obviously the Dacron has come to the top of the section. Give it a little bit of a tug like that and then let it go back in. Put that down somewhere safe. Now don't cut it off too short yet. Just cut it off. Get rid of that. 
I've got a little bead on there, which I want to reuse, like that. Same with the short stop, if you're using the F1 short sections, exactly the same. The only thing I have got to find is my diamond eye threader, which is there. Like that. So then I put the bead, put the bead on first. Get your new elastic. Then the rudder puller end. Put the elastic through and then thread your bead on. Now obviously everybody uses different beads. It depends on the elastics that I'm using really. That's a brand new diamond eye threader, he's absolutely lovely. I do like a brand new diamond eye threader because I bet most of you are the same as me, chuck them on the floor, they get all tangled up and you get your hair off with them and yeah, and they get in a right mess. And then what I do then is do that, like that, and just think that's quite nice, but do it the dac on end as well. Now, every, you know, get asked a lot, you know, what tension do you have it, Des? You know, what is the ultimate tension? Now, to me, that NC, it's hard to do that on camera, it's hard to show it, but that's what I call quite pingy. But when you pulled it out that end, it didn't seem that pingy. So always do it the Dacron end. Now, before I actually do it, I'm going to put a bit more lube in because it's brand new elastic, even though it's got a little bit on from the packaging, down both ends, like that. You can always put a little bit of water with it, just to let it run down in, because that's what I do. Because I want to get this dead right, it's important, you've just put like a brand new elastic in there, what you don't want to do is over tighten it and, and mess it up. Now that's, to me, for that elastic, a little bit pingy. So get down to your rotor puller end. I'm just going to pull that elastic out like three inches so it's less tension. So you've got more elastic in the top kit. I think I could just do with a little bit less. So pull that again. This is the, one of the most important parts, I think. Now you can see that now. It's just sort of like if you see that on camera, it's just sort of wobbling and going back in. Now that's how I would have it because I know when I get to when I get to the, my peg the next time I use this elastic, I'll put a bit of lube in it, I'll put a bit of water in it, and it'll probably run even smoother than what it is there. It's actually just starting to sort of just creeping in, but I think that for me is going to be perfect for what to start with with a with a brand new elastic. Now, the next thing is, obviously, I've got to put a knot on there to stop it from going through the bead. I just use, like a, just do like a double, triple overhand knot. Just to make it big. Pull the bead down to the knot. Like that. And then cut everything, cut the tag ends off. And it's amazing, if you pull it that end, see? It's actually a bit tighter. So I'm going to pull them off, cut that off as well. So basically you've got a nice big knot there, sort of fail safe really. It's not going to pour through the bead. You can hear that. And that lube's sort of working down through the elastic now. Just check that other end again. Yeah, look at that. So I've probably adjusted four inches from when I actually first done that. And then that's ready to go, basically. So that's the quickest and easiest way. And I basically, you know, depending on where I'm going, where I'm fishing, I've got all my elastics. But one thing you've got to be really, like I said at the start of this film, just be aware that if you have got sections, you know, that you're not using, and they have got a Dacron or a plastic connector, and they're knotted, just check them. Honestly, and I, for me personally, for and I, I hear people say, I've had my elastic snap right on the Dacron connector. I'm like, how long have you had that on there? Oh, well, I've had it in there months. I've not used it. And that's because the knot, and it doesn't matter what elastic you use, the knot over time will actually sort of, it's so tight and so wrapped around something, it actually sort of, it doesn't sort of decay the elastic. It just makes it brittle because it's so tight. So just be aware that now and again, I'll go through 
my elastics, and I obviously carry a lot of top kits, you know, there's some 13 drawers there, and then all of a sudden I'll just think, right, let me just check the knots, and you might have to just take a little bit off, even though it's like a, you know, you've not used it much, just check it, and that's what I do sort of, not week in, week out, but month on month, you know, before I go carp fishing, I know I just go through a lot of elastics, and uh, making sure that everything's right. It's only the Dacron endo normally that I sort of work. I might have a quick look at the knot by the, you know, down by the rotor puller, but just check your Dacron knots. And like I said, that's the easiest and quickest way of changing an elastic in your, in your top kits. That's the elastics done. I've been through all my elastics now, but obviously I'm sort of doing the ones that I know I'm gonna be using now we're into the winter months and vice versa when we go into the summer months. Obviously, I'll be concentrating on my thicker elastics more than the light elastics, depending on what, what venues you go to. Now, I've, uh, like I said, I've not done a lot of prep. I'm going to have to do quite a lot of prep now. Elastics are done. If you want to clean your top kits, you can do. All I do is just use a bit of a tiny little bit of like washing up liquid, you know, a couple of drops and a bit of water and obviously clean your top kits. And that's exactly the same with your pole. So if you do want to clean your pole, basically just use a bit of soapy water, clean it, dry it, let it dry out, and then put it back together. But obviously you can just imagine how many floats and rigs that I do and I, I use, you know, do a lot of commercial fishing now, and I still do river fishing as well, but I have used an awful lot of rigs. I've been down White Acres a couple of times recently, and it is rig time now. This is my sort of drawer, if you like, which I've just taken out of my seat box. A lot of those floats in there, I've got hooks on. Now, one of the questions I get asked is, do you use rigs, you know, twice? And I do sometimes, but it gets to a stage where you think, I don't know what's going on on there. Are they deep enough? Is the line damaged? And it is time today for me to do some rigs. And it does take some time. I'm very lucky, obviously, but I do a lot more fishing then obviously the average angler, because I'm out doing filming and doing lots of matches. So this is what I do. I obviously bring me, me, me rigs in. This is me rig trays. I've got some more that I've obviously go through. I've got some, um, I've got some floats on here, which have got tangled, because I do get tangled now and again. And I've obviously ripped them off. If they've got the silicon bits on them. They're a little bit dirty, but I'm not worried about that. Um, so I need to retie some rigs. F1 maggots I'm going to do first. I've got a tray there of basically my lighter main lines, 011, 013, but I've got my 015 ones in. So I'll obviously just go through the whole lot. And then we'll talk about shotting patterns while I'm actually making them up. I'm very lucky in my garage, in my man cave. I've actually got a little sink in here. I've put a bit of boiling water in there, put a little bit of hot water in, and I've actually cleaned, <laughs> believe it or not, people, I, I've actually cleaned some of my winders off. So I've got a little brush. I know it's a bit one of them, but it does get mouldy. Some of these are absolutely disgraceful. I'm not going to lie. If Zolt can pick that up on camera, look at the state of that. So, uh, yes, Zolt, it's not good, is it? Probably, you know, if you was a hygienist, you'd be looking at it thinking I'd probably be sacked. But there you go. So anyway, let's talk about where I go from here. Right, I've got some rigs here. I'm going to retie some of the floats. You can give these a little bit of a wipe down. I'm not that bothered even if you just chuck a bit of water on them. I mean, these floats, I've probably used some of these floats since they were actually first ever produced. And um, yeah, that's how good they are. I think, I think, since we produced the F1 maggot, I reckon I've broke like three. And it's basically where the carbon's actually broke, where it's smashed against the pole from losing a fish and the carbon is bent and broke. I mean, so impressive for a little float like that. But anyway, let's talk about, you know, let's make them up. So I've got me, um, me thing there. Let's have a look at the winders. That winder was actually in my box. 011, it says on there, 4B12 F1 maggot. So I've got it written the information on there. So probably in here there is, there's two, there's two 4B12s. Well, there's more than two, there's three. So I know that I've probably used them I've just fought at the end of the session, you know, I've tangled them, whatever. I've got duplicates anyway, which is really, really important. I carry the same rig on the same main line, and that's why I probably carry a lot of rigs. So, power line. Let's get my 011 power line. 
peel a bit off. First thing to do is make sure you start with a nice clean end. So a nice good pair of scissors like that. And now these floats have already got, they're little shortcuts that I do. I'm just going to dry that off a little bit. Make sure your hands are nice and dry when you do this. These are the little shortcuts I do. So what I do, I bring, because obviously I've got three bits of silicon on there. I've got ones probably like six or seven mil long, and then two that are probably four mil long. So what I do is feed all them down to the end of the carbon, like that, so they're all stuck together. Hopefully you can see that. And then with nice dry fingers, I actually take the whole lot off and hold it like that. Let's put the float down a minute. So I've got the three bits of silica now <clears throat> trapped in my two fingers. And then I feed, this is where the glasses, <laughs> this is where the glasses have to come on, I'm afraid, because this is the my, oh yes, I, is that you, Zolt? Yeah, it is him. So what I can do is feed that bit of line all the way through the three bits of silicon, like that. So now, instead of messing around, I've got the three bits of silicon. The only thing I have forgot to do, <laughs> because I'm talking and not concentrating, is I've put the float on. So I've just taken in three bits of silicon off, put the 4B12 F1 maggot, so it's through the eye, let him sit on the bench, and then go through the same procedure as what I just done. Now I've got my glasses on, I can actually see it. Feed that through the three bits of silicon. Just little shortcuts that I've learned. I know it's only tiny little shortcuts, but at the end of the day, the less time, the less time you can do this, the better. I'm not sure how many times I've actually dropped my line on the floor. Millions. Right, let's get them bits of silicon on. So transfer the silicon back on the carbon. Obviously the two little ones first and the longer piece last. And I'll do, you know, I've done this before, but I still get asked, you know, people are like, oh, Des, I can't find your rig making bit. So that's what we're doing again now, and just, just a couple of little shortcuts. So that's on there now. Three bits of silicon, one about an inch from the body, one in the middle, and the longer one just over the end of the carbon. And then I'm going to tie a little loop in the end. This is where your hook length is going to go. So I can do it by hand. I know some of you use a loop tire and you can use if you want a loop sizer a little plastic preston loop sizer for the cobwebs now if you want to use one of them that's entirely up to you i mean i like a loop probably like 15 mil but i can just do mine by hand i know probably most of you can't i'm not worried about having everything exactly the same size apart from me hook lengths and things like that cut that tag end off and now I'm ready to go <clears throat> so so yeah that's that so 011 4B12 F1 maggot right let's pick him back up obviously you put little pins and stuff in your workbench if you want so that's it so that's ready to go now so brand new 011 power line ready to go with the shot now shot I'm doing actually these on shot I mean, I do prefer shot on a lot of my rigs, especially with the lower diameter main lines. It's not until I get up to maybe 017, 019, 021 when stocks for me come into it. And I know a lot of you still use stocks for everything, and I totally get it. For me personally, I just like shot um, because it's something that I've probably used forever. And um, yeah, stocks for me come into it when I'm fishing heavy lines. But this is what I'm going to do. I've got my shot here. Just got some normal Preston shot. Now I'm doing a 4B12. So I'm going to want nines, tens, and some baby stops. So I've got some number 12 stops or number 11 stops. So the first thing I'm going to put on, on a 4B12 F1 mag, I actually put two number 10s and three number nines. That's what I've always done. If you want to use smaller droppers, you can do, but for my standard everyday fishing, I just go two number tens and three number nines and obviously use your shot in tube and see where you are. So let's get some shot. If you use a little bit of like kitchen towel like that, 
it just keeps everything nice and so it's not going to go all over your workbench and then what i'm going to do i usually use my little i'm just going to use a float i put something through like a float which helps you hold the line tight i might get away without my glasses on i might not the light's pretty good in here so my first number 10 obviously i'm going to bite them on for quickness but you can use pliers that's entirely up to you and then i've got a little jig this is my shot in jig you can use a piece of wood i've actually got it on my float box so from there to there it's five inches and then from the second mark to the third mark is six inches and that is my standard commercial rig if you like but i only use that on a 4b14 and a 4b16 and then obviously bigger floats but on a 4b12 like i said i'll go two number 10s and then they're roughly i don't really measure them like probably four inches apart like that so two number nines sorry two number tens get me number nines out i don't use number eights on a 4b12 so i've got some number nines out and i have them spaced out exactly the same like four inches i just look at them like that and think that's about right if you really like want everything bang on then you can like use a tape on a piece of wood a little jig and I'll just do that again. Roughly about the same. Don't have it too, too tight. Lovely shot that is. And then obviously just go careful when you bite them on. I've been doing it for a long, long time. And you just get a... I know some people put their shot on and then move them up the line. I've never done that. So that's that. Now I've got my shotting tube over this side. Have a nice deep shot in tube. This would do all my commercial rigs quite easily and probably most of my river rigs. So we drop that down in like that. And normally two number tens and three number nines, it's probably just sort of the body's just out of the water. And then I'm going to get some small stocks. You'd be surprised, you don't have to actually put that many on. Number 12s. See, my eyesight's not that bad. I can get a number 12 start on. So I'm going to put two of them on. I normally use number 12s or number 11s. It depends which one I can find. I'm going to put three on. Actually, because I reckon that was... When you look at the body just out of the water... You'd be surprised. you think, oh, I'll put a number 10 on there and it's probably too much. So, so that's a 4B12 F1 maggot. So two number 10s, three number 9s, and I've got three number 12 stots. Stick that in. There you go. It's absolutely bang on. So I've probably got like four or five mil of that little hollow bristle stuck out now. Now, I know when I go fishing, that will probably sit down a little bit more. And you know what I'm like in my floats. I do like them shotted down. So that is it. Now, obviously, you can write that in a book. You know, but obviously, I'm making these rigs up quite often. So there you go. That's my standard rig. And obviously, if you wanted to just use number 10s, you can do. But for me, over several years now, I've just come up with that little system. And to be honest... 90% of the time, it never changes. It's just simple. If I want it, string it out. If I want to move these shot a little bit, I can, you know. But when I'm fishing these floats in between, I would say between three and four or five foot, that little shot and pattern, you can't beat it. Just gives you that little bit of flexibility of flicking past, catching a few on the drop, etc. etc. So that's that. And then what I do then is go like that, which is basically six foot. So that's going to cover you for that float. And I'll just give it a tiny little bit more. Like that. Now I always do a loop. 
it might not work out exactly right on the winder, but I always do a loop, ready to go. So a nice big loop like that. See what that is. I normally set them to about sort of three and a half foot, something like that. Get your nice clean winder. Loop it. I never put a hook length on. I only do that on the bank. And then obviously it's a double winder, so you get two rigs on here. And what I'll do next, I'll do a 4 b 14 And show you the shotting pattern for that. And if we get time, I'll do a 4 b 16 So keep that nice and neat. And that's worked out perfectly with that loop. Sometimes it does, sometimes it don't. But you could actually wind it round. Obviously, you know then... If the tag end is up here or the end of the line is there, you could do a loop and you're going to be in within that. But normally, it's very, it's not very often that you actually get the loop that you can't actually use. Sometimes I'll just put it around the end, but that's me. So that's a 4B12, all done out, all marked up, 011. So let's have a look for a 4B14. I put it for both of them. I've got hooks on, which they have. Now, this is obviously straight off the winder. That one's been used. I'm going to redo it. So it's a 4B14. He's black, because I've used him in silver water. Let's take him off. And this is what I do. So I take it off like that, wind it round. Don't chuck the line in the bin. Always put it in a little container. And you can actually recycle the line. You can take it to your local shop and they actually recycle it. And believe it or not, it's actually made into sunglasses. So obviously protect your environment as much as possible. Obviously that floats probably, I've probably used that float for years and years and years. Let's have a look at the winder. Now, it's not 011, so 13, 4B14 F1 magnet. So get your 013 and just go through the same process. But obviously this is a 4B14. I'll do this as quick as I can. Cut that off, get your float ready. Put the line through the float, or through the eye of the float. Get your glasses on if you need to. It's quite quick and easy when you get going. Bring that silicon down, so it's all on the end of the carbon. Grab it between the two fingers. Let that float go. So you've got, then, feed through the silicon. So you go for the whole three bits. Now, really, silicon is really important. This is actually 0 0.3 silicon, which I've got there. Now, anything for F1 maggots or anything in that float range, so F1 fines, F1 maggots, Chianti's, is 0 0.3 silicon. If you then move up to diamonds, carp shallows, it's actually 0.5 silicon. And it's really important that you use the right silicon because you don't want it coming off. You know, when you move a float, God, how annoying is that when it comes off when you're fishing, when you're match fishing? So 0.3 on your F1 maggots, your chanties, your F1 fines, your F1 pellets, even the carp pellet is 0.3. Diamonds, carp shallows, little dibbers, it's all 0.5 because they're obviously thicker. So I've got me three bits of silicon on there. Hold them in your fingers again. Bring your float down. Just give it a little lick and feed those three bits of silicon on. Like I said, 0.3, because it's, it's an F1 maggot. Like that. Put that down a bit. I'm going to try not to drop the spool on the floor this time round. Little single figure of eight. I always do a single figure of eight, not a double. I don't think it makes any difference at all. It just keeps the knot nice and tight. And for me, when I do my when I do my loops by hand, it's just a lot less hassle. One thing I will do on it, which I didn't show you on the 4B12, is just use a little, you know, a float bristle just to tighten your knots up. Make sure everything's nice and neat and nice and tight. Cut the little tag end off. Again, ready to go now. So I've got me float on, little loop, 
Give yourself a little bit of line. Now there's two options with a 4x14. If you're soft pellet fishing and you want everything nice and tight and not nice and positive, you can actually use a number nine shot or stots. But personally, for me, I, I do a lot of maggot fishing, a lot of cassa fishing. I do a lot of so, um, soft pellet fishing as well, but I just prefer number tens. It's just the versatility for me from going to one to the other. If I'm going to a Pacific venue where I know I'm gonna be fishing soft pellet like Tunnel Barn, I'd probably just use one number nine and a bulk. So, but normally for me, I go two number tens and then number nines is bulk. So let's do that. I'm doing my normal rig. So I've got my number tens there. Again, use some sort of a, a flow just to hold that like that. Number 10 on first. And that is right down by the loop. Second number 10. Like that. So, so you don't need to... Um, And this is where you use your little jig, which is on my float box. So once your line's in there, and you can have this set up on a bit of wood. I've probably had this down white acres or something, and just thought I'd just mark it up on a box. So I'm going from my first mark to my second mark, like that. And then what I do on a 4 before 14 I actually put Three number tens on. So I got my two droppers. And this because this helps your shotting pattern basically. So just get that third number ten on. Like that. Now that number ten goes to the third mark, which is a little bit bigger gap from the first to the second. Which is that. So you've got your number number ten right by your hook length loop. Roughly about five inches and then six inches, which would now be the start of your bulk. Now, normally a number 10 and five number nines are very close to getting these F1 maggots dead right. And that's the same on the, the diamonds, same on the chanties. And I'll just leave a tiny little gap between the shot and you can soon I know it's a bit daunting for some people making their own rigs and that's why they obviously do pre-tied rigs and I you know I could quite easily use pre-tied rigs but I do get enjoyment out of actually doing my rigs so that's four number nines hopefully we've not overcooked it let's just check so that's four number nines and number 10 is the bulk and two droppers. Stick that in your shotting tube. Oh, actually, that's very, very close. So I've got basically two number 10s as the droppers, a number 10 and four number nines. Now that number nine, if I'd have put, because normally a 4 by 14 will take two number 10s and five number nines. So that would be like that, smack bang on, where I want versatility of when I put a couple of small stots on, I can you know, if it gets windy, if it starts towing. If you don't give yourself that little bit of versatility, you can't do nothing. You've got to start using nail cutters and start nipping shot off. You know what happens with that, you end up cutting through the line. So let's get a couple of, I'm going to put two number 12 stots on. So this is my adjusters, because it's out of the water too much at the moment. And over the years, I've obviously found out that if I put a number 10 on to start the bulk, you get that little bit of versatility of adjust, if you want to adjust your float a little bit. So, Two number 12 stops. Let's have a look now in the shotting tube. 
Yeah, absolutely bang on. So if I had put if I would have put five number nines as my bulk, it would have probably come to that. But to actually adjust it, I've had to actually cut the shot around with a pair of nail cutters. Now, if I want to nip one of those little stots off, I can, and it can bring the float up a bit. So let's go through the same procedure. Six foot, a little bit for luck. Loop on the end. You'd be surprised, you know, how fast you can get at this. Get some good light in. Then obviously 4 by 14s you're going to be using it in probably four or five foot. A bit like that. That's done. Obviously you've got me winder. 013, 4 by 14 Loop on. Come on, man. That shotting pattern sits on your on your winder really really well as well it's not actually going around the corners which i absolutely hate because when you take the rig off the shot is like sort of bent which i absolutely hate that so there you go let's get that on perfect then with the little loop look so that's done oh 13 4 be 14 let's have a look at the other one the other one's actually i will take him off but i'm not going to do it again because I'll just show you that, but that one wants doing as well. And that's what I do. I just go for the whole the whole lot and I take that off. And, you know, some people might say, well, that's a bit of a waste. You know, I mean, you've, you might not even use that rig. Well, that's, you know, that's what I do. So let's take him off ready. And I'll do him. Do him later. So like I said, recycle your line. Take that off. In your little container. So that's the easiest way of doing rigs. Now, 4B16, I have got a 4B16 done there, I think. And I'll take him off. I'm not actually going to tie him because it's the same process apart from one crucial thing with a 4B16 is the droppers are number nines and the bulk is number eights. So on a 4B16 F1 maggot, and that would be very, very similar to a uh, a diamond etc etc i use two number nine droppers same as the same as what i've just done on the 4 by 14 then i actually start the bulk with a number nine and then number eight so on there i've actually got three number nines and one two three four five six number eights so 4b16 three number nines six number eights and then you've got your little adjustment shot underneath this one wants doing as well so he's coming off and that's the process that's what i do week in week out get in me little man cave you know if you're doing it in your house come up with a little system i know some of you will probably use like rig mates and things like that it's absolutely fine but it's probably one of the some of the you know, frequent most frequent questions i get asked is like through rig patterns and how you do it and then all i do then if you went through my fishing box, I've got a lot of these F1 maggots. I've got a lot of diamonds and they're all tied on different main lines. So if I'm going skimmer fishing, roach fishing, I use a nice 011. If I'm going to like tunnel barn at the moment, I use 011 because I'm fishing with 010 up lengths. If I was going to a fishery with carpin, I'd probably use 015. But because I'm using these floats, I just do the same floats. And that's why I carry so many rigs because it's not... It's duplicates as well, but they're done on, on, on obviously heavier and lighter main lines, which, which makes complete sense and it just stops the confusion. What you want to do is use a set of floats that you're happy with and do them on different main lines, but use them shotting patterns. On a 4B10, which we haven't really spoke about, that basically is five number 10s. And I do them the same as a number 12. I have them spaced out like three or four inches apart and I'll just have fine number tens like that and put them on the winder. Obviously, shot them up in your shot and chew because you don't want to be messing about that on the bank. So there you go. That is how easy it is to um, keep on top of your rigs and how to make them. So that's the elastics done. There's some of the rigs that you see how I get on with it, how I make it like as quick as possible to actually retie a rig. Let's move on. The next thing I've got to do is hooks. And as we all know, hooks are really important whether you're winter fishing, summer fishing, hair rigging, you know, where you're hooking baits. Obviously, I carry a big selection of hooks. But at the moment, I've actually ran out 
and I have actually ran out. That's my little, what I call my little SFL book um, box. And looking inside, it's pretty raped, to be honest. There ain't a lot left. Now, obviously, I use a lot of pre-tied hooks. You could probably see my mag sticks up there, which some of them are empty. Some of them have actually got hooks on that I'm not actually using at the moment. I've taken them out because I've sort of put some other ones in the mag store boxes. But let's talk about hook links. You know, if you can use a pre-tied hook, which I do use a lot of, especially SFLs and GPMs and XSHs, that's fine. But there's certain times of the year, as in now, where I'm fishing, you know, in my fishing at the moment, I'm catching F1s, I'm catching silverfish. I don't want to be fishing 011 reflow power. I want to be fishing 010. And unfortunately, in any pre-tied hooks, to actually do every hook in every diameter line is virtually impossible. The shops would just be totally full of pre-tied hook lengths. And that would be great. But, um, it, you know, a lot of people don't maybe do what I do and vice versa. So there's one thing I've got to do is tie some SFLs up to 010 because the pre-tied ones in i think it's 18s and 16s come on 011 and where i'm fishing at the moment i don't need that and in my mind i want to be fishing lighter i think it makes a big difference to your fishing especially in certain different situations as like i said f1s and surface fishing so i've got to tie some 16 and 18 sfls but i'm actually tying them to 010 aki power which is that stuff there it's an amazing line we brought out a few years ago I don't use it. I know a lot of you guys might have sort of swapped over to it because it is a beautiful line. But that's what I'm doing this afternoon. I'm going to tie some 010, 18 SFLs and 16 SFLs because that's the sort of fishing that I'm doing. And that's what I'm doing in this, you know, that's what I'm doing in my fishing hut is basically building up or tying some more hook lengths to see me through now for the next couple of weeks. But going on to that, I'll just have a little bit of a chat about hook lengths and what I use in certain situations. You'll probably see in that that I've actually not just got SFLs tied six inches, I've actually got them tied to three and four inches or three inches. Really, really important. I'm not using them at the moment because I'm not fishing shallow. You know, I'm not fishing up against features at the moment. But as the year goes on and we get into springtime again, that's when I start fishing with short root lengths, especially for F1s, silverfish, when I'm fishing shallow, down the edges and things like that, because it makes a huge difference. So I'm not just, and unfortunately, again, going back to pre-tied, you can't have different, you know, a lot of companies, and the same as Preston, we do some four inch GPMs and we do six inch on, on a lot of the hooks, but we don't do little three inch ones. But on some of your fishing, that's when you've got to pre-tie your own hook lengths or get someone to do them. But I do carry them with me because they're really important. So there you go. It's the same with my three inch GPMs. Yes, I don't use them all the time. I carry them around. I've got them with bands on. So I band casters, I band a pellet. And I've also got the same GPMs, spade ends. Again, tied to you know three inches on like 011, 013 reflow power because that's what I need on certain occasions. So I have got to do some time. Luckily, I'm stocked up with them. And then going on again, GPM pre-tied. I've got my little boxer there, so I use them. That's why some of them are empty out there because I've used them. They're great. You know, if I want to fish a, a pre-tied GPM to 013 or 015, I just take them off and use them. Another little box that I carry is this bit of a mess if you like i mean actually stuck some of the uh mag sticks you can actually super glue them in they stick pretty well to be honest that plastic because i've actually ran out on the believe it or not i've actually ran out of hooks in that box and there's a lot of hooks in there um i've got the kkh barbed and barbless because when i go to Maybe somewhere like Shearwater, for example. Thank God Shearwater's back open again. So I'm going to fish on there with some matches. We're fishing for carp and bream. And we can use, and we're long range feeder fishing. We can use barbed hooks. And I've got them tied with little bands on, uh, bayonets, etc. But I've also got in this box, not just four inch hook lengths. Some of these are straight off the mag store system, as you can see. But some of them are three inches. Because when I go to certain venues, when I'm fishing with a little mini ICS, I honestly think three inches is better. 
you know, when you're fishing a tiny little feeder, that loop of line, if it's four inches, sometimes it just don't feel quite right. You know, crafty little F1s. I think if you bring your, that's when you've got to tie your own hook lengths. So just bear that in mind. That, at the moment, I'm not using that much because I'm not doing a lot of method feeder fishing. But believe you me, going in as soon as the weather starts warming up after Christmas, this box will be coming out in here very, very often. Because again, I do a lot of feeder fishing, fishing for carp and F1s. So there you go. I hope that helps a little bit. I'm not actually going to tie any hook lengths for you today. I think we all know by now, you know, there's lots of things on, on the internet about how to tie and, um, you know, spade ends and eyed hooks. But it just shows you that I try and keep everything going. I, one, I don't, I try and do gear that I need than what I don't need. And obviously through the year that will change. But I hope those three little things that I've showed you today in, in my sort of man cave, cold man cave as well because it's freezing cold you know take that on board there should be some nice little tips i'm sure you know the shotting patterns the sort of easy ways to change the elastic how to protect your elastic how to look for elastic you need to change if you don't need to change it cut a little bit off just check the knot it's really important it's the things that, that i take for granted and you guys probably don't even know i'm doing it so there you go i hope that helps um yeah and then next time hopefully we can come back to the man cave and then move on to sort of different things again even maybe some making some rigs up for rivers and canals different floats i can talk to you about different floats shot in patterns that i know make a huge difference so there you go thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe to the preston youtube channel